Those of you who know him well know that Dr. Gray was caring, outgoing, funny, and that he never met a stranger. If there was any area where Dr. Gray seemed uncomfortable, it was when you attempted to celebrate him. You appeared most unsettled when you tried to express appreciation to him when you tried to tell him thank you. I can hear him now say, wait until I did something. <laughs> when he passed the Shady Grove Baptist Church in Pelham and Temple Memorial Baptist Church in High Point during 24 years as a pastor, he more often than not stopped any attempts to give him a pastor's anniversary service. What lengths he'd go to to ensure that he'd lift up the name of Jesus, but not the name of Haley T. Gray. He kind of did that today. As you and I may have already determined, Reverend Gray made his funeral arrangements. And this is one of only a few events that he ever planned for himself. And so we come together today by the hundreds to celebrate his life and his work. And wouldn't you know it, he's not here. Reverend Dr. Gray, as many of you know, was a workaholic and a perfectionist. He worked hard and long. It was not uncommon for him to work past the midnight hour and even into the fourth watch of the night to ensure that what he did was done right and done well. You know Dr. Gray. Whether he was preaching, caring for his church members, or carrying out his duties as executive secretary treasurer, whether he was doing civic service or while he was doing something as a personal favor for you or for me, Reverend Dr. Haywood T. Gray strove to do everything well. Speaking of doing well, I invite you to give your attention to the scripture and the text of Matthew's 25th chapter and 21st verse. These are the words of the text. His Lord said unto him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Amen. Well done. Good and faithful servant. One of Reverend Dr. Gray's many gifts, which he demonstrated so well, was storytelling. Well, while talking with you in the family room of your home, or over a meal together at a restaurant, or when he brought greetings to your association, or remarks at some general Baptist setting, or when he preached from the pulpit of your local church, he had an amazing ability to tell a story. <coughs> Jesus our Lord was the master storyteller, often using what we know as parables to teach his disciples then and now valuable life lessons. In Matthew's 
25th chapter, we find the last parable which Jesus tells before his betrayal, arrest, crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension. In Jesus' final seminary class, he teaches a lesson which he titles the parable of the talents. He tells his disciples that a man was traveling into a far country. Who before leaving home called his disciples his disciples, his servants, to come to him, and he gave them possessions called talents. To one of them he gave five talents, to another he gave two talents, and to another he gave one. Jesus said the owner of the talents distributed them according to the abilities of each of the servants to invest the talents and Return to him with the talents that he gave them and the profits which they would make from their transactions. Having distributed his talents to the servants, he began his journey. And while the master was gone, the servant who had received five talents earned five more. The servant who had been entrusted with two talents returned with two additional talents. The servant who had been given one talent made no investment, did no business, made no trades, earned no interest. He was given one talent and had only one talent to return to his Lord. When the owner of the talents returned, the servants presented the talents which they had been given and those that they had earned. It goes without saying that the owner was displeased with the servant who earned nothing. As a result, he took the one talent back and gave it to the servant who had already ten talents. To the two talents who had been given, to the two servants who had been given talents and returned more than they had been given, the owner was pleased. He was complimentary. He was appreciative. And he was awarded. To them he said, Well done. My good and faithful servant, you have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over me. Enter into the joy of your Lord. I recall Reverend Dr. Gray's last words to the General Baptist family at our annual session in Durham on October 31st of last year. You know that he could not just give a report and sit down. And the truth is we never wanted him to. His executive secretary treasurer's report to the General Baptist Convention were usually followed with a report from heaven. <laughs> Reporting transition to preaching. I remember that on that last, that day last year in October, Reverend Dr. Gray quoted to us in the ballroom of the Sheraton Convention Center the words of Acts 10 and 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. But went about doing good. And healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. As only Dr. Gray can, he eloquently and passionately delivered his final message to our Baptist families. He was singularly saying goodbye. I heard him, as did many of you, say that at his funeral, he did not want the eulogist to elaborate on his accomplishments as men deem accomplished. He did not want us today to publish the awards and recognitions that he had received. 
He did not want us to talk about what a meticulous administrator he was. He did not want us to suggest that he was a great preacher. He just wanted us today to recall that he did good. <laughs> Doing good was an uncommon, common practice of our beloved Reverend Dr. Gray. And doing what he did well was his professional trademark. Doing good. Showing acts of kindness were demonstrations of his heart and his compassion. Some people talk about doing good deeds. Reverend Gray did good deeds. Across this auditorium, across North Carolina, and across the country of people whose lives he's touched in tangible ways through gifts, through his answering our calls for help, through giving his wise advice, through his going out on a limb for us, for him sticking out his neck for us, he was a giver. He gave us his ear. He gave us his time. He gave us his talents. He gave us his treasures. He did his two of the servants in the text. He took what God gave him and he invested it into our lives. And the returns are ours to enjoy. He was the epitome of a servant leader. In his book, Guided by an unseen man, the ministry autobiography of Hale T. Gray. Gray wrote about his baptismal service at the Calvary Baptist Church in Yale, Virginia, performed by the Reverend W.A. Cotton when the boy Haywood was just nine years old. As he shares the account with us, speaks of how important his baptism was to him. He said it meant so much because it was what Jesus had done. And more than anything, he said, I wanted to be like Jesus. Well, Jesus was all about doing good. Investing talents and producing more talents. Read the Gospels and you'll see Jesus doing good. He did good for a couple when he turned water into wine at their wedding. He did good when he touched the leper and said, Be clean, and he was immediately healed. He did good when he freed the demon possessed man who was living in a cemetery. He did good when he took two fish and five barley loaves and fed 5,000 men plus women and children. Jesus did good. Jesus did good when he gave strength to the weak and when he protected the humble, the vulnerable. Jesus did good. He did good for the sick and the poor, for the outcasts and the sinners. He did good. And we are included with whom and for whom Jesus did good. He did good for all of us. He did good for the world. Jesus never asked for pay. He never submitted an invoice. He never received the love offering. He never requested a favor in return for a good deed. He just went about using his talents doing Hayward yeah. T. Gray was so much like Jesus in that respect. He did good. When some of us were outdoors, he literally took us in. When the convention was financially in the red, with his integrity, with his ingenuity, with his management skills, with his negotiation skills, his appeals to pastors. 
taxes and churches with the contributions of his own personal money and sometimes going without getting paid. He led the convention from being on the verge of bankruptcy to being financially secure. Like Jesus, he took up his cross, and like Jesus, he suffered. Gray understood. God did not call him to be sensational. Called him to be a servant. He called him to be a blessing. It is ironic but more providential that Reverend Dr. Haley Gray would have celebrated his birthday this past Sunday, Easter Sunday. Our first inclination, at least mine was, was a shame that he died just three days short of his birthday. But the truth of the matter is, one, he would not have had us to give him a birthday party. And two, God has something better for him than we could have given. He delivered his first sermon at the age of 15, and he delivered it on Easter afternoon. He preached on many Easter Sundays. But this Easter two days ago, rather than going to church and preaching down here, he worshiped in church up there. After more than four decades of preaching, 4,400 sermons delivered. Reverend Gray's preaching days are over now. His pastoral days have ended. His days as executive secretary treasurer are no more. He's finished taking care of everybody down here. As the Apostle Paul said of himself, Gray has fought a good fight. He finished the course. He kept the faith. And now, rather than proclaiming the good news, he has heard and received the good news from the one he wanted to be like. The one he longed to please. He heard Prison! 
joy of being with God. Come in, Haywood Bear. Joy cometh in the morning and it lasts all day. Come in, Haywood. Come in. Welcome home, Haywood. Come in to the place of unspeakable joy. Sir. 